Were you surprised then, or would you always be an advocate of go top heavy with your penalty takers as well? Because Neymar, for example, was down to be the fifth penalty taker for Brazil, but by that stage they were out, so they, it, he couldn't get involved in that. Would you always, like it was, for example, against West Germany, Lineker, Beardsley, Platt, solid. Yeah, I mean, it, it has to be. When I saw Rodrigo go up for Brazil laugh, I said, hold on a minute, he's a 21-year-old kid. Mm. He's only just come in a yeah. sub and he's... No, he went and done it. I mean, he mostly felt obliged to, or maybe mm. he wanted to, but still it wasn't right. And I think we all know Neymar was looking for the glory. Mm. You know, that's sim it's as simple as that. Someone like him should have been the first one there for others to follow on from, you know. Mm. And But if, if that's what it's become now, football, in the sense of I want to sit there and wait for to have the glory side of it, then football isn't going in the right direction. He should have been there at the front, taking that first one so everyone can see him because he's, he's built into this, everything's about him, that team. Mm. Go and take the first one and everyone would want to follow off the back of you because you're the, the one they look at, they're kind of idol. Go mm. and do it for mm. them. He doesn't, doesn't mm. want that. He wants the glory at the end so he can have his name mentioned in taking mm. the winning penalty. Yeah, yeah. sets see, the tone, doesn't If it? we go back to the Euros, my, my, that was one of my criticism. It's not the individual missing the penalty is that having teenagers take penalties in a major final is huge pressure. Now, if they put their hand up and they really believe they can, it's OK. But sometimes you have to go, mm, I'm not sure. I'd rather have senior players do it or take the penalties who have been there and done it on a regular basis. Now, I think it's a lot different this time around because they've all been an England player for a lot longer. Yeah. So this tournament's slightly different. They've experienced the missing. They've, you know, they're, they're now feeling like they're... I mean, Saka's, Saka's playing so well. He's been looking so confident for Arsenal. He, you know, he's grown as a player in that time. Mm. And I think Rashford's had a real turnaround. So I wouldn't be as bothered this time about them taking penalties because I, I feel that they've grown as players. Well, I think they've they've both said that if it ever came yeah. down to it, they would feel confident of sort of rectifying what had happened at, at the Euros. Well, don't worry, they'll be trying really hard to make sure it doesn't even get well, there. Well, yeah. yes, I'm sure. <laughs> nobody wants it to go to penalties. Yeah. I don't even as fans, nobody wants it to. Um, but there is that added added excitement of it certainly. Um, in terms of this tournament as a whole, then, who has surprised you team wise? Um. Ooh. Whether that's good or bad, maybe they've bowed out early stages or the team um won Canada in their oh. first game. I really enjoyed watching them and what mm. they the, what they done. Maybe should have got more out of it, but I just enjoyed watching them. USA mm -hmm. in certain games. Um Morocco. Morocco. No, no mm. that, they they did surprise me. Their their fan base surprised me as well. Their fan base is just yeah. it's between them and the Argentinians who have which has got the you know maybe the biggest support. Mm. I'm going to give it more to Argentina because they've travelled the furthest. So I'm going to give them a little bit of respect for that. The noise they being in the middle of them again as I was in Brazil. I think we, when I was with a group of people I was with, we were the only ones who weren't standing up and doing that hand movement they do. <laughs> it could be taken the wrong way, by the way, the hand movements, but. It's it's really really incredible. You just you just couldn't talk. The noise they never stopped, but it could have been worse. You could have been stuck in the middle of that Senegal band. <laughs> <laughs> with, with that beat in the end, you walk out of it. Dum dum. Yes, I was at, I was at the Senegal game once um, in this tournament, and yes, it, at first you're like, this is great. They're bringing the right atmosphere. And <laughs> just, at the end, you're like, please stop. <laughs> but anyway, um, what was I going to say? Oh, what about some of the European teams that have been a bit disappointing, Germany, Denmark, Belgium. Den Denmark, for me, are the ones. I mean, I didn't expect a lot from Germany. After seeing them play at Wembley, and I know it was a, well, it was a Nations League, but still, they disappointed me at Wembley. The, everything about the old West Germany football and the new Germany football had been lost. There was mm -hmm. nothing there that made me look at them and say, that, that, was, that was a team that I knew... No, it was a all German way of playing. Yeah, it was just yeah, gone. Yeah. I mean, when you've still got Muller playing regularly and still a key mm. player, then you know they haven't shifted on, to be perfectly honest. Mm. But um, Denmark was the one, real one that really, really surprised me. I thought they was going to really go out there and compete. And, you know, because we always know that they go so far and they always lack a centre forward, mm. a goal. But they, they lacked a team. There was nothing there at all. I know as well that back in their country, that back in Denmark, they're very, very unhappy. They expected mm. more. So they never never fulfilled their potential at all, what was there with them, mm. because they are a team. They don't rely on individuals as such. It's, they've got their key players, but it's not all about a player. It's about a team. 